Welcome to another Friday Functions video. In this Friday's Functions video, we're going to make our own bar chart. We're not going to use Power BI and we're not going to use the chart uh, control. We are actually going to create our own cool little bar chart. And so that's the bar chart right here. Now up here, you do see that I have a gauge and this gauge is coming directly from Power BI. And I can show you briefly how I got that tile there. These are counting the items in a list on SharePoint, which I'm going to show you in one minute. But the superstar of this Friday Functions video is this little bar chart right here. And the purpose of the bar chart is to show you how far along the task is. So for each one, people are entering a percent complete. And then once they enter it, this bar shows how far along it is. So if you click on one of the items in the gallery, you'll see that the bar will show up according to the percent complete. So in this first one, they're about 30% complete, which is a third, almost a little bit less than a third. In this one, they're about 60% complete, so a little bit more than a half. In this one, they haven't done anything, so it's a full light blue bar. And if I keep going down here, I actually do show the ones that are 100% complete. And you can see that they get this really dark bar because they're 100% complete. So I wanted to kind of show you how I did this. This was done as a request from a customer a while back. And I had meant to show you how I did it, but then I just never got around to it. So that's what this Friday Functions video is about. So let's get started. As a prefix, I will show you if you want to add your own Power BI tiles like I did here, you can always do that. And that gives you the full function, functionality of Power BI inside your Power Apps. So that's awesome, right? And so you can see my tile comes from the Power Apps PM team dashboard called Tests in a tile called This, right? And all I did was to add that tile was go make the tile first, and then I go to the Insert menu controls and scroll all the way down and you'll see we have the Power BI tile. So those of you that haven't tried inserting Power BI tiles, you should give it a shot. It's a lot of fun and it adds a great deal of flexibility to your application as well. All right. Um, I love the look of the Power BI tiles sitting inside of my app. Now this particular app is a punch list app, which means somebody is plugging in actions, right? It could be in this app or it could be in another app that need to be done. Punch list in my world usually mean that we're at the end of a project, for instance, in construction, and you're running around doing inspections and you're making a punch list of all the things left to be done before we can close out the project. Or maybe we're at an event and we're getting ready for a new conference or something and we're creating punch list items the day before the conference begins. In any case, Punch list items are usually short lived because they represent things that need to be done rather quickly, but they're a way of making sure that everything gets done before the event occurs or before the project ends. Okay. So that's the context of this. And so in this particular punch list app, um, we're actually totaling up all the tasks that have been logged, indicating how many are completed. And these are just simply counting rows, right? So here I'm counting the rows in the SharePoint list, which I'm going to show you. Um, I'm also counting if the percent complete is greater than um, if the percent complete um, is greater than or equal to one, which is 100 percent. You'll see that in the SharePoint list, too. And then finally, what tasks um, um, you kind of change the difference. OK, so we subtract what's completed from what's not everything in there and we get what's remaining. All right. Simple math. Right. So. That's not the point of this video, though. I thought I'd show you in case you had questions. I want to show you how I made this little bar chart right here. So I'm going to zoom into the bar chart. First, I'm going to show you the data source. So I'm going to go into my data sources. And I love that we can just click edit right there in Power Apps. I remember when I first started doing Power Apps, we did not have that edit option. And I used to go crazy trying to find my SharePoint list. And then we added that feature, and I just thought it was awesome that we have this feature. So I can click Edit Data, 
and then it takes me to the list. Now, if I was doing customized forms, which this would totally work in customized forms as well, I wouldn't need to actually uh, use that edit data. I can just go back to my list because you know it's all integrated. But this is actually an app that's connected to SharePoint rather than a form, right? So you'll see here that I have my columns for collecting the task, and then I have a column for percent complete. And if I go in the back end of my consent percent complete column, just so you can see how I built that, the column is just called percent complete. It is a number column type. And the only other thing I did was click show as a percentage for SharePoint. And that's all I did. And I said, okay, because I clicked that little checkbox on SharePoint, it literally says 50%, 40%, 30%, right? See that? And so the way I decided to do that in my app, though, is by using this little diagram. So I put the percent values right here, and they're really here just for you. In real life, I would not show this, right? So the visibility might be off because its whole purpose is just to help us test this um, because the bar chart is going to show the percent complete, all right? So I'm going to put it back on so we can see right? But what is this bar chart over here? It's not a chart control. It's not a Power BI dashboard. It is literally just two rectangles. So if I uh, click on one of them, it'll bring me into my, you can see here in my navigation on the left, that I have two rectangles. And I'm going to put them both at the fill property first. Can I talk about the fill property first? All right. So the Rectangle in the front is filled in light blue, and you can see it right there. All the circles represent, you know, the whole rectangle. Okay, um, that is is the rectangle there, and then I have a rectangle behind that one, right? And that rectangle is filled with dark blue. And remember, you can always reorder what's in front of things by using the reorder options that we have here, which are just like PowerPoints, bring to front, send to back, so forth and so on. So the dark blue rectangle is in the back, all right? Now, nothing really crazy going on here. If we go look at the height of the dark blue rectangle, you'll see that it is set to absolutely be the same height as the template. And remember, this white card is the template. FYI, let me just tell you how I made that template in case you like it. After I made my gallery, I inserted my gallery control. I set the gallery um, items property here so that it would only show the tasks that belong to the user looking at the screen. And so I did a filter of my store punch list where the owner column display name is in the user full name that's looking at the screen. And then I sorted that by due date. Now, the next thing I did to get that kind of card effect is I went into template padding and I made the template padding 35. And that gave me all this space around each of these cards. Now, my screen itself has a background of a very light gray which enabled me to make my template fill white. And that's why the card kind of stands out against the screen background because the screen fill is a gray. This is really, 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 really light gray. It's this one right here. Okay. And that's why, you know, you got that card look. Um, as for these dots, in case you're wondering how I did those, we don't really have a, um, an icon for that. So I just literally typed three dots with returns between them and made them big. And then what I'll do is I'll do my, my select statement for that. My on select statement for that will take that wherever I'd like it to go. But it was my way of making the three dots. I wanted that three vertical dot look. Okay. This is just my due date. You can see that this is this item due date. This is the, this item percent complete. And this is the short title, okay? All of those coming from the SharePoint field um, data, okay? So with all that said, now you're ready to learn about the point of this video, which is how these rectangles work. So like I said, the back rectangle has a height that matches the template height, no matter what. And how much of it we see depends on this blue rectangle's height. 
So if I go to the light blue rectangle and I look at its height, you'll see that it has an if statement. Basically, if the percent complete is zero, which means that nothing has been done, then the height of this is the same as the template height. And what that will do is make the blue rectangle completely cover the dark blue one. So the light one, the light blue one would completely cover the dark blue one. Otherwise, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of a math, right? We're gonna say take the rectangle background in the the, the the rectangle in the back, its height, and then subtract its height times this item complete com percent complete. And that math means that the right amount of this light blue is covering the dark blue. So if I run through this, just so you can see it working again. So right now, that blue is covering is covering most of the dark blue because this is one, you know, only 30 percent, a little bit less than 30 percent complete. You can see that happening here, where there's more than 60. Of course, it is covering the blue completely because of our if function on this one. But if I go all the way down to this one, this is going to be like, it doesn't cover it at all, right? So um, it looks like it's 100% complete. And so that's how easy that was. Really easy thing to do. Kind of add a little bit of uh, something different. I'm one of those people who likes to do something different. I probably would just put this at an invisible property of off because that keeps this even cleaner, right? I'll keep that label there with that percent complete for my testing, but I'll make it invisible for my consumers, right? But they can actually easily see this. Now, as far as whether or not those rectangles, you notice that they're only visible when I click on something. So I actually have them visible only if the item is selected to keep the screen from looking too busy. Um, but if you notice the visibility property for both of these rectangles, I'll just see if I can get to the visible property here, is if this item is selected. So this is a single true statement for visible. It will be visible if this item is selected. And I did that both for, for both rectangles so that you really only see this little graph um, when they click on an item and they would have to click on this one to go to the details, right? Um, so that's my little trick for today. I really like making like my own little custom controls uh, because you can, all you can do is, you know, add your shapes or add your pictures even, and then add logic uh, around them. And you can get some very creative little experiences that you create yourself. And that's what Artsy Power Apper loves about building apps and power apps, how creative I can get in what it looks like. So I really hope you enjoyed this Friday Functions video. Be sure to visit us on the community and post your own ideas and suggestions there in our ideas forum. We look forward to hearing from you. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you at the next Friday Functions video.